25 takeovers. 25. The first one being on May 29th, 2014. So we've had five years of NXT specials, NXT takeovers, that is. And not one of them have been terrible. And if there is a terrible one, I don't remember it. I really don't. Honestly, all of them have been fantastic. And on tonight's 25th takeover special, in Bridgeport, Connecticut, this one was no different. This one was just fucking great. Honestly, with the war that's going on with WWE and All Elite Wrestling and um, with Cody Rose destroying Triple H's throne, Triple H saw that and was like, all right, I'll give you a fucking show. And boy, did he ever. So let's go through it, ladies and gentlemen. So we kick things off. With Roderick Strong versus Matt Riddle. Now, I've been sort of been paying attention to NXT recently, um, so I'm not exactly sure what the storyline behind this is, but these two guys had a killer opening match. Um, Matt Riddle just continues to impress me every time that I see him. Um, I really liked how during the end of this match there's a bit of mixed martial arts stuff going on. And uh, Roderick Strong, as well, is a really solid in-ring performer. And these guys just had a really good match between each other. Uh, Riddle hit a Superman punch off the steps, and then uh, a back suplex on the apron that uh, Strong hit. There was a GTS and Gotch-style suplex, but then he kicks out. Then Strong hits a strike after strike, and then hits the face buster, a knee trigger powerbomb, and final flash before Strong kicks out. Uh, and then he blocks the corkscrew moonsault. Well, not really a corkscrew moonsault, but um, some sort of a flip move that Matt Riddle uh, attempts. Uh, at one point, there was a Boston Crab, and then Riddle reverses it into the Bro Mission submission. And then Riddle uh, elbows him and hits the finisher to uh, win the match. So I reckon Matt Riddle, I know he had a shot at the NXT North American Championship, but man, I'd love to see him have another shot at that title. He is... He is so awesome, man, and he uh, he's one of my favorites on NXT. And uh, Roderick Strong uh, put in a good showing. I do know he's had a bit of dissension uh, with the Undisputed Era as of late, and um, if you saw the ending to the main event, um, you'll know why that could be a very important factor going on, which I'll talk about later on. And then we get to a crazy-ass Fatal 4-Way Tag Team ladder match for the NXT Tag Team Championships. Uh, the titles have been vacated since uh, the War Raiders, a.k.a. the Viking Experience, a.k.a. the Viking Raiders, a.k.a. the Viking Super Ship Experience, whatever they're fucking called, um, relinquished their NXT Tag Team title since they are now a member of Monday Night Raw. And um, their NXT General Manager, William Regal, decided, you know what, let's put the titles up on the line in a fatal four-way ladder match. And the teams were uh, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish from the Unspeed Era, uh, Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan, uh, the Street Profits and the Forgotten Sons. And uh, yeah, this match was so much fun to watch. Everyone did some great shit in this. Um, it wasn't, I'd say, as like insane as the... One from New Orleans, but this was still some great action, man. Like, everyone at least got hit with a ladder. Kyle O'Reilly, oh my god, did he get hit with some ladders, man. Um, yeah, Wesley Blake power bombs O'Reilly into the ladder while Fish was trying to uh, get the titles, resulting in him crashing on top of Riley. And um, yeah, there was that one point where the Forgotten Sons actually looked like they were going to win the match because. Um, uh, Jackson, or whatever his last name is, came into the match and just ran rough shot over all the teams in the match. And um, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of the Forgotten Sons, if I'm being real with you. I haven't jumped on the hype train for them yet, but, you know, they're all, they're all right. Um, and so, however, uh, the tides kind of turn uh, against his favor and all the teams start to gang up on him and then smash him with a ladder. Uh, there was a great spot as well before that even happened where um, Cutler gets hit with a European uppercut in a doomsday position while Blake, uh, in the same position, gets hit with a blockbuster by Ford, uh, which was fantastic. And um, there was a big outside dive over the ladder. So uh, I think the Undisputed Era are holding a ladder or some other team. And uh, Montez 
Ford, who really was a, had a star performance in this match, um, jumps over the ladder and also the top rope and lands on Jackson, which was awesome. And then the Street Profits, unfortunately, get sandwiched between the ladders by Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan. And then they fight with uh, Undisputed Era on two ladders. But the Forgotten Sons pushed them off. But thankfully for the Street Profits, Angelo Dawkins uh, spears one of them. And Ford jumps up on the ladder, fights them off, and grabs the NXT Tag Team Championships in an incredibly hard-hitting match. Uh, every team uh, had a time to shine in this. I think Montez Ford was a real show stealer in this. I think he did some great stuff alongside Angelo Dawkins. Undisputed Era, as always, were great. And the Street Profits at one point looked like they were seriously going to win the championships. And um, also to Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan, they were really solid workers in this match. So yeah, everyone had a moment to shine in this, which I always think is great for a ladder match. The best type of ladder matches are the ones where everyone in the match has a chance to show off what they can do. And uh, yeah, this match was no different. Street Profits, I was pleasantly surprised to see them win the NXT Tag Team titles. And I was also kind of shocked that it's taking them this long to get on a TakeOver special. These guys have been on NXT for quite a while now. I'd say for the past two years. I believe, or maybe a little bit less, but um, yeah, the Street Profits have been definitely one of the most hardworking teams on NXT, and to see them finally become the NXT Tag Team Champions, I think it's just great, and um, I reckon we're going to see the Undisputed Era versus the Street Profits at the next TakeOver event, which would be uh, just a great match to see. Then we get to the NXT North American Championship match. It is the Velveteen Dream defending against Tyler Breeze. Yes, Tyler Breeze is back on NXT. And, um, yeah, he hasn't lost the step. It's such a shame to see the contrast of what he is on the main roster compared to what he is down at NXT. It really goes to show you that it's not the talent. It's the way they are booked. It's the way that the lazy creative writing if you can even call it creative i mean you could probably blame vince for most of it but yeah it's a shame to, to see how little vince sees in someone like tyler breeze when you watch him in a match like this and it just goes to show you how talented the guy really is two very strong characters you have top both very egotistical and flamboyant uh, but sort of in different ways I, I guess since Tyler is all about taking the selfies and which uh, comes up quite a bit in this match and um, Velveteen Dream with the whole Prince uh, tribute gimmick, which uh, is also great. And so, um, so a little thing that I like before the match uh, is just Velveteen throwing his gloves in his face. I don't know. I just like that for some reason. And uh, yeah, when I mentioned about uh, selfies being a factor in this match, Velveteen Dream uh, must have gotten Tyler Breeze's phone. And takes a selfie with him, like kind of worn out on the on the announce table, and uh, Tyler uh, and his North American belt, which I thought was great. Uh, there was a Dream Valley driver, but then Breeze kicks out. Uh, Dream DDT, which was reversed into a supermodel kick, but Dream also kicks out of that. And then there was a drop kick, which was caught in midair, but uh, Dream manages to hit the Dream DDT. Uh, Dream hits the unprettier, and uh, so does Tyler Breeze in this match. So I'm sure. So I'm sure Captain Charisma would be uh, very proud of that. There was a spinning heel kick, but then Dream rolls out. And uh, I really liked the ending to this match. I thought the ending was really fucking good. Um, Tyler uh, grabs the North American title and uh, throws it out to the ref. Um, but that gives enough time for uh, Velveteen Dream to take advantage. Uh, a Dream Valley driver and a Purple Rainmaker to get Velveteen Dream the win. And then after the match, uh, Tyler Breeze and Velveteen Dream share a selfie. However... Velveteen Dream, right after the selfie, reminds him that he is on top of the NXT North American title division and why he is one of the top men in NXT right now. So, yeah, great stuff overall. Velveteen Dream, he needs that NXT championship at some point. I know he's doing a great job as North American champion. I think he's, in my opinion, I feel like he's been the best champion so far. He carries himself like a champion. He makes that title feel important. And honestly, he's a much better champion than some of the people on the main roster, honestly. So, yeah, um, but this is what to be expected from Velveteen Dream. Just constant praise. And Tyler Breeze, it's such a shame that we, we're we not going to see this Tyler Breeze on the main roster. And it just goes to show you just how talented a lot of the roster is. But unfortunately, due to the way 
they are handled creatively, they don't really get a chance to shine. So I'm glad that Tyler Breeze, even if this is like his last like proper match, like he got one last chance to shine for WWE, which I thought was great. Then we get to the NXT Women's Championship match. It was Shayna Baszler defending against Io Shirai. And um, yeah, Io Shirai did do her best to uh, fight through this entire match. She even hit a German on Shayna and a springboard drop kick. Uh, Shayna does that submission where she lifts her up by one of her arms, but then she fights out of it and drop kicks her off the top rope. And uh, she hits a beautiful moonsault outside. And then uh, Jesse M. Duke and Marina uh, come out to interfere. However, Candice LeRae comes out and stops both of them by whacking the shit out of them with a kendo stick. Um, I remember seeing the build-up for this, and I'm like, would Candice LeRae turn heel in this match? Or like, Io Shirai the match? But I'm glad she didn't. Uh, Shayna misses a um, moonsault. Well, misses getting hit with one anyway. And uh, tries to reverse, and um, Io Shirai tries to reverse getting into the choke. And uh, into a pin, but she kicks out of that. Shayna manages to lock in her uh, finishing choke. Shirai tries to fight out, but unfortunately, she falls victim to it, just like many other uh, of the women in NXT. And Shayna Baszler is still, still your NXT Women's Champion. Like, she has to be up there with Asuka as the most dominant woman in NXT history. Like, she's really up there with Asuka. I know Asuka has gone completely undefeated, but she would have to be a close second, surely, of just how vicious she is inside the ring. Honestly, who knows? Maybe Asuka might come back down to NXT and be the one to finally put Shayna Baszler to rest. Who knows? But I was thinking that until we got to the uh, after the match, where Io Shirai, she's completely pissed off that she lost, grabbed the kendo stick and whacked the shit out of Shayna Baszler with it, and then does a moonsault while holding a chair and uh, hits Shayna with it, which I thought was kind of cool. And you'd have to think, well, by the way that match ends, this is going to be a rematch, but it's going to be like an Extreme Rules sort of uh, stipulation or a hardcore stipulation where uh, these two girls are going to just go all out, and just have an absolutely vicious match, which um, I honestly can't wait to see. I think this could be a very exciting storyline going into uh, the show before SummerSlam. And then we get to the main event. Holy Jesus. For the NXT Championship, Johnny Gargano, Johnny Wrestling, Johnny Champion, whatever you want to call him, taking on Adam Cole and um, Josiah Williams, uh, who is a rapper, uh, go wrapped to uh, the Undisputed Errors theme, which is kind of cool. And I'm just looking through my notes here, and oh my god, there's so much stuff. And uh, yeah, these two guys had an absolutely fantastic match. It just goes to show you just how good these two men are. This was... I'm not sure if this was going to be the match that was planned anyway after the Gargano Champa match that was meant to happen in New York, but... It just goes to show you how good NXT is at um, adapting to things. Because if this was WWE, this would be an absolute mess of a feud. But NXT knows how to take a bad situation and make it good. And now we've got a great feud between Johnny Gargano and Adam Cole. And these two guys did not uh, relent at all. Just um, some great moves in this. There was a burning hammer, face crusher, knee... Uh, but uh, he kicked out Johnny Gargano, that is, and the two exchange a lot of super kicks in this match, even at the point where they both super kick each other on the outside, uh, slingshot DDT, but then Cole kicks out of that, uh, a Gargano escape locked in, but then Cole uh, uses uh, Gargano's hurt leg to escape and put Johnny in a figure four, and he continuously aims at the, uh, at the hurt knee, which I loved, I like how this match has a bit more psychology to it than the uh, match at New York because it seemed like no matter what big move Adam Cole was hitting, Johnny Gargano was just kicking out just like out of like every fucking move he could. Uh, there was a Panama Sunrise on the outside, which um, yeah takes spot of the night for me. And then a great moment where Cole looks at Gargano and says, "You've had your moment. It's time for mine," or something along those lines. Uh, but uh, Cole locks in the Gargano escape on Johnny, and uh, Johnny even hits the last shot on Cole. You know a rivalry 
is really good when the two guys do each other's finisher. That's when you know a rivalry is lit, okay? There was a reverse runner, but Cole hits the running knee to the back of the head, but uh, Johnny kicks out. That was the last shot. Um, so I'm guessing, like, the momentum of that, of the reverse runner, I don't know. I, I wasn't really a big fan of that. I hate when people, when they get hit with the reverse runner, instantly do a move. It's just uh, the lack of selling. I don't know. But that was just a, a real just nitpick for me because this match was absolutely brilliant. Uh, Gargano accidentally dives into uh, the referee, and uh, Gargano uh, even kicks the chair on Adam Cole because he was going to use it on um, Gargano when the referee was down. And a bit that I really, really love. Adam Cole um, signals for the Undisputed Era to come out. And Johnny Gargano uh, grabs the chair waiting for O'Reilly and Fish and Strong to come out. But um, they never do. Gargano realizes that. But um, he gets his legs and uh, lands head first. But gets caught in uh, Cole's legs and uh, lands head first. But then kicks out. Gargano goes to stand. But then like he falls and um, But it turns out he was playing possum the entire time and locks in the Gargano escape. And it almost looks like he's going to retain the title. But um, he, uh, Cole elbows the hurt knee. At Sunrise or whatever it's fucking called. Uh, gets reversed, but he ends up hitting a real, really good sunrise. And uh, a knee to the back of the head, the uh, last shot to win the NXT Championship in an absolute thriller of a match. It was... Great stuff overall, some uh, great uh, aiming at the knee. I love when people pick a part, of, go for a body part and just aim for it. To me, that's just great psychology in my opinion. And even Adam Cole signaling for the Undisputed Era to like to catch Johnny Gargano off guard. I thought that was a very smart move of him. And he was able to capitalize at the end to uh, win the NXT Championship, which I think is just great. Now I'm wondering, are we going to get one more match between Gargano and Adam Cole? I think so. I think we are going to see one, and that will probably be when Johnny Gargano gets called up to the main roster. As for who Adam Cole will face after his feud with Gargano, maybe Roderick Strong? But I don't think it's going to be a long feud. Um, I think Roderick Strong is going to get sick of Adam Cole, and eventually uh, Roderick Strong is going to leave the Undisputed Era, go out on his own. Is he going to win the NXT Championship? Honestly, I'm not sure. I don't think he's going to be one of those guys to win the title. I could be wrong. Um, I could be absolutely wrong, but um, we're just going to wait and see what happens on NXT television, which I'm very excited to watch. Anytime I see these takeovers, it makes me want to watch NXT more. So, um, yeah, that was NXT TakeOver 25, match of the night. To me, it was the main event, although every match on the show was fantastic. Spot of the night, the... The Panorama Sunrise on the outside. I, I completely fucking forgot what the name of the move is now. Holy shit, or how to pronounce it anyway. Um, how I'm going to rate the show, 9 out of 10. Brilliant stuff, fantastic show. Go watch it. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching this review. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Make sure to comment down below your opinion on NXT TakeOver 25. And uh, what matches do you want to see on the next NXT TakeOver? I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say. So um, yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. And I am out in three. Two, one.